We all just watched the RNC convention not too long ago, and if you tuned in, you probably realized that there was zero substance. No policies offered, no solutions proposed, just fear-mongering. Be afraid of socialism, be afraid of Black Lives Matter protesters, be afraid of Cori Bush, be afraid of everything. Vote for us and we'll protect you from all of these really scary things in the world. I mean, this is what you come to expect from the Republican Party. But it's interesting because Steve Hilton of Fox News, he gave me the impression that he was expecting something a little bit different. Because after the DNC's convention, he, you know, I think rightfully called them out for having not much substance, just using platitudes and cliches. I agree with that. But he was given an exclusive sneak peek at Donald Trump's second term and some of the policies that Donald Trump will be pursuing. He says it was bursting with ideas. Bursting with ideas. Never something that I would associate with the Republican Party. Now, even his optimism here is misguided because the policies that he's so excited about aren't that substantive, aren't that fresh or innovative. But yet, he's excited about this because, of course, he's a hack. And after calling the DNC convention a substance-free event, you know, I'm now curious to know what he thinks about the RNC convention after watching it, thinking that, you know, there's going to be these types of policies. So we'll, we'll look at the preview that Trump gave to him prior to the RNC convention, and we'll see if we could keep track how many fresh and exciting ideas are being proposed by Donald Trump if he gets a second term. Our exclusive look at the Trump second term agenda. You may remember that a couple of weeks ago, I asked of the Trump campaign, where's the energy? Where are the ideas for the future? Well, with this new policy plan, they've answered those questions and then some. After talking to President Trump and seeing these plans, it seems to me that the president and his team are bursting with ideas to move the country forward. Concrete plans, not the vague platitudes we heard last week, which themselves were completely overshadowed by the non-stop negativity of the Democrats' doom and gloom convention. Because the Democrats and their media allies are so consumed by hate for Trump and his supporters, they think that all they have to do to win is lie hysterically about Trump and scream about systemic this and structural that. No. People want to know what you're going to do for them. Specific, practical things, not just esoteric academic concepts. And here's what the Trump campaign is promising to do for you and this country in a second term. The plan is called Fighting For You. The best is yet to come. There are 50 commitments in 10 categories, including jobs, ending our reliance on China, drain the swamp, defend our police, end illegal immigration and protect our workers, and innovate for the future. One of the categories is eradicate COVID-19. And in fact, there was important progress towards that end just this afternoon with the president's announcement of FDA authorization for the use of convalescent plasma as a therapeutic. This is a uh, powerful therapy that transfuses very, very strong antibodies from the blood of recovered patients to help treat patients battling a current infection. It's had an incredible rate of success. In the weeks ahead, we'll take you through all the key policies in this document and show you the contrast between this and the Biden-Bernie Sanders platform. But for now, here are a few specific highlights. Tax credits for companies that bring manufacturing jobs back from China with a target of a million jobs returning providing school choice to every child in America, exposing Washington's money trail and delegating powers back to the people and the states, one I particularly love, winning the race for 5G and establishing a national high-speed internet network. There is so much more, exactly what we wanted to see. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I couldn't even keep track of all of the fresh and exciting ideas that we should have expected from Republicans. <laughs> I don't know what you expected. I don't know what you expected. Now, again, keep in mind, this was filmed before the RNC convention. So um, he thought that maybe some of these policies would be on display at the RNC event. But of course, you know, it was nothing. It was nonstop fear mongering. But yet in that same clip, he criticized uh, the Democratic Party for doom and gloom and nonstop negativity. I am really curious to know what you thought of the RNC convention now. By the time I film this, like his reaction is probably up. So uh, we'll have to follow up. But um, 
even the policies that you're really excited about, they're not good. These are mostly amorphous right-wing talking points that don't actually help people. Because again, Republicans don't actually care about helping people. Their agenda is very unpopular. They are a minority party that gets power because they convince rubes to vote for them, even if they're going to cut environmental regulations and give tax cuts to the wealthy because they convince these people that they're going to protect them from all of the boogeymans. Now, that boogeyman will change depending on the political context. So it might be immigrants. It might be MS-13. It could be Antifa protesters. But there's always some boogeyman and Republicans win by convincing enough people that they're going to stop the big bad boogeyman. But Steve Hilton thought that that would be different at the RNC convention and he was excited based on this. So basically, he lays out six categories. This is what Donald Trump gave to him. And these are broad categories about what Trump will be pursuing in his second term. The only one that even remotely touches on normal Americans and impacts them in a concrete way is jobs. Now, we don't know what Trump's plan is in particular. More jobs, I guess, is good, theoretically speaking. People want that. But the question is, what do we mean by that? If Trump is just vaguely promising more jobs, does that mean we also get protections for workers? Do we get an increase in the minimum wage? Or do we get more shitty jobs where people are working longer hours for lower wages? Like, this isn't necessarily a good thing unless you're proposing things related to jobs, like protections for workers, increased wages, pensions, drain the swamp. I mean, does anyone believe that Donald Trump is going to quote unquote drain the swamp after his own family is personally profiting? off of his presidency? I mean, how can you with a straight face think Trump is going to address corruption in a meaningful way when he's one of the most corrupt presidents in American history? Certainly the most corrupt since Nixon. And I mean, like the rest of these points here that he brings up, these are all just, again, vague right-wing talking points. They have no real bearing on the quality of people's lives. But then, uh, not on that list of six categories, was uh, Trump is proposing the complete eradication of COVID-19. Oh, well, geez, why didn't you just say that earlier? Wow, how innovative. Trump wants to get rid of COVID-19. This is something that only Trump is proposing. Joe Biden isn't proposing the eradication of COVID-19. Like, how are we excited about this or supposed to get excited about this after Donald Trump completely fucked up COVID-19 and his response to it and continues to lie about COVID-19 and spread misinformation? Like, is this honestly something that you think people are going to get excited about when Donald Trump already proved that he's incapable of handling a pandemic? Like, what are you what are you doing after nearly 185,000 Americans have died because of Trump's incompetence? I mean, who thinks Trump is going to handle COVID-19 like an adult? Now, he does share Trump promoting the FDA's authorization to use convalescent plasma for treatment. But how is that a game changer? The FDA will exist with or without Trump and they'd still use that as a treatment. Do we think that that wouldn't be a thing if Joe Biden was president? Like, how is this a Trump-specific thing that we should be excited about? Like, why would we vote for Trump because of this? Like, you have nothing. You're grasping at straws. But he does get into some specifics. So, he wants to bring back 1 million manufacturing jobs from China and offer tax credits for companies that bring back jobs from China. Okay, this is specific at least. I give him credit for that. But why do large multinational corporations need even more tax cuts? Because I thought that the 2017 tax law already promoted investment in the United States. Like, what happened? Why did they need more tax cuts? Why couldn't Trump get this pulled off in his first term? <laughs> I mean, what a joke. Uh, on top of that, provide school choice to every child in America. Oh, goody. So we'll defund public education and promote charter schools so Donald Trump's donors and his education secretary can make lots of money. How exciting. What a phenomenal policy. I mean, he's right. This is going to impact people in a concrete way, but not in a good way. Destroying public education to promote for-profit schools is not a good thing. But at least it's all policy. On top of that, expose Washington's money trail and delegate powers back to the people and the states. I don't even know what this means, but you don't get to claim that Trump or Republicans are in favor of states' rights after he literally just threatened to subvert the will of governors and send the National Guard and the military to states to violently crush protests. Like, that isn't a thing you get to say, and then also say that you're in favor of states' rights. It's one or the other, pick one. And if we're talking about a money trail in Washington, if that doesn't include Donald Trump and his own business dealings, then I'm not interested. Uh, also, win the race to 5G and establish a national high-speed wireless 
internet network. Now, first of all, 5G is a technological advance that is going to happen regardless of who's president, so that doesn't matter. And if Steve Hilton is suggesting that Trump is going to establish some type of public option for the internet, I'm going to have to doubt that. I think probably what this means is uh, just make sure that people have access to national high speed. But when you say national, like when you use that word, you imply that there's going to be like a public option for internet. So rather than using Comcast, I can buy like government sponsored internet. Is that a thing? I don't think that's what Trump is proposing. And if that's not the case, like if I'm, if I'm correct and Trump isn't actually proposing that, then what's the promise here? We get 5G, which was inevitable anyway, and high speed internet. I mean, these private companies are already trying to increase infrastructure to get high-speed internet to more areas. So, like, what what promise here is related specifically to Donald Trump? Why would we only get this if Trump is president and not Joe Biden? So, do you understand, like, even the things that you're excited about, this is not substantive. This is not meaningful. This is not going to help people. And here's the thing. Just having policies... That's not good enough. They have to be good policies. They have to be policies that actually help people. Like if you propose a policy like private charter schools, that in and of itself, because it's a policy, isn't just inherently good. You need policies that help people, objectively help people. This is not good public policy. So, I mean, it's funny because he criticized the Democrats because they had no substance, just platitudes. But I bet... I guarantee, in fact, that he's going to have a little bit different of a narrative when he talks about the RNC convention. Like, it's not like he's going to say, wow, I was really excited for all of these policies, and then the RNC let me down. Like, I highly doubt that. I'd eat this microphone if that happened. But, I mean, this is a hack. This is a propagandist, and he knows what he has to do. You get on camera every single day, and you say exactly what the RNC wants you to say, like a good little stooge. And you pretend to be excited about it. Now, maybe he drank the Kool-Aid, but either way, he knows his role. And he should be embarrassed because this um, exclusive look at Trump's policy priorities for his second term. Does anyone think that the Republican Party is bursting with ideas, as he said? Well, if you think that, you're a rube. But I think that people know what they're getting when they vote Republicans. They know the environment is going to be destroyed faster than as if a Democrat were president. They're going to cut uh, regulations. Donald Trump deregulated uh, a lot. And that led to the, uh, what was it? The Was it salmonella or E. coli outbreak with lettuce? That happened in 2017. Like that's so far back now that I can't even remember. But this is what happens when you get deregulation. Like people know about this. Like people know Republicans don't support Medicare for all or anything that helps them. They just are hateful. And they've been duped to believe that there's a lot of boogeymen that Trump is going to protect us from. So they know what they're getting. Don't pretend like Republicans have some fresh, innovative perspective that they're bringing to politics. Give me a fucking break. Like, you know better than this, Steve. Come on. The Republican convention was positive, substantive, inclusive. Real policies helping real people. <laughs> <laughs> Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay?